Hello, in today's video, we're going to run a test from the simple carbon capture device that I showed in the last video, the alchemy of climate change. The alchemy of climate change was a big picture uh, understanding of the, the overall situation, but now I'm going to get into more details about how one might be able to absorb carbon dioxide from the atmosphere without adding more carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere in the process, which is actually very difficult. But for now, we'll test the chemicals and see what their ability to absorb carbon dioxide from the atmosphere is. So I made this little chart here, and what we'll start off with is we need to know if there was an initial CO2 release from mixing the chemicals. That we don't know, because in the video, I just threw it together for I knew it would work, but I didn't check every little detail along the way. But in a scientific test, we'd want to see what our initial CO2 release is just from getting the ingredients together. Okay, then we're going to check the temperature, and that's in Celsius. Um, the pH is unknown. I don't have any pH test strips for it at the time, but it's alkaline. The material is pond water and willow ash. Uh, and then I, on another page, put a description of how much and what the ratios are, which in this case we don't know, it's just random mix. We're gonna run a test for 15 minutes, and uh, during that test we'll do, we'll get the initial CO2 in the room, we'll get a uh, intermediate reading at five minutes to see how fast it's dropping, and then we'll get a final reading at 15 minutes to see how much CO2 has been pulled out of the air. And uh, of course I'll edit this video because it'd be kind of boring to sit and watch the whole thing. This is the initial CO2 reading in the room. Um, I'm just gonna call it 680, because the more I stand next to it, it'll raise from my breathing and such. <laughs> okay, we're gonna begin the test with the solar power. The solar bank is a little low today. this for five minutes and we'll see what it can do to the CO2 levels. So the way this machine works is we take energy from the sun, convert it to electricity, use that electricity to run the motor, to mix air, water, and earth essentially. And that will remove the CO2 from the air. Now the earth that you're mixing in has to be an alkaline earth so that's why in the previous video I used a fire to generate some ash. Yes, I realize the fire put off more CO2 than I'll ever capture, but if you can understand that there might be alkaline materials that are already out there, just existing from other processes that have real no, no real purpose, they can be used for something like this. The air inside the chamber is recirculated. That way we can maximize the effect of this process in a short amount of time. If I were to open it to the room, yes, it would pull CO2 from the room, but because the room is very big and this machine's relatively small, it would take a long time to measure the, uh, the effectiveness. So the chamber is um, constructed with this plexiglass plate with a bunch of holes drilled in it. That keeps some of the moisture from bubbling up onto my very expensive sensor. Which by the way, Forensics Detectors makes a great CO2 sensor. It's 125 bucks. And so far I really like it. It seems quite sensitive and responsive to whatever, I mean if you breathe on it, it'll instantly start jumping. Uh, there's a little lag, but that's just normal for the sensor to catch up with whatever's going on. This little air pump has vibration dampeners. It came out of medical equipment, new air. I thought it was a bad pump, but it turned out it still runs. And uh, my solar battery bank, which needs some replacement and some work, but it's running. It's been running for, well, three years now. It runs the lights in the entire building, so. Uh, you know, it's not just for this one little gadget.
Okay, we're at five minutes right about now, and it's showing, we'll call it 452. I'm gonna go write that number down. Okay, it's been about 15 minutes. I found that this will continue to drop. Um, so maybe a final reading would be about 201 from, from my experience with this particular mixture, but uh, we're, we're getting some data. So I'm gonna call it 251. All right, here we have our final readings. It's incomplete data, but it's data nonetheless. And from these readings, if you had more readings uh, to the final drop down point you would have a curve an absorption curve and you could create an absorption curve for each of the mixtures and uh, tighten up the measurements on the quantities and the mixtures of the substance and then uh, obtain some real data to determine what kind of chemistry is going to work best and then look at the big picture you know it, it could be that limestone is great uh, but it's maybe it's not as strong as ash from a tree, but maybe it's easier to mine without burning so much carbon, you know, or uh, I think uh, chopping down trees to do this defeats the purpose. So like, don't do that. <laughs> um, and I want to show you a couple other things while I've got your attention on this video. If you've watched this far, congratulations, your attention span is pretty good. So... <clears throat> Without the phone light, it's pretty dark in the room. Yeah. And uh, I'll show you my machine over here. But um, the uh, system runs uh, also all my lighting on a remote controlled 24 volt switch. And they're just attached to the beams. I've actually got some of them turned off, but it's pretty cool. So, in the first video, where I addressed uh, this Elon Musk $100 million prize for carbon capture technology, I mentioned a, um, a method where you might have a metal alloy that's electrified or perhaps heated in some way that can just pull carbon directly out of the air. The reason I wanted to mention that, I know the electricity would have to come from solar power or else, again, you'd defeat the purpose, but... Um, I think the reason that um, that would be a handy device is you don't have fluids to mess with and you could put screens like this into a smokestack and pull carbon dioxide from the air from a factory. That is really, I think, Mr. Elon's uh, main goal here because um, it's, it's to his uh, advantage to do that financially if the political movements swing to a, a position where they carbon tax or find major carbon dioxide emitters, it's in his best interest to try to reduce that carbon output, which he does, uh, would have a high carbon dioxide output from the production of those batteries that they use in the Tesla cars, right? Um, <clears throat> so there's a financial incentive to try to get some of the carbon emissions reduced in the production of electric vehicles. And, um, yeah, I've got a lot of messages from naysayers and uh, people that don't believe that the carbon dioxide is even any kind of problem in the atmosphere. I disagree with that because the information from NASA and lots of other experiments indicates it does create somewhat of an issue for the climate. Um, so, you know, can we live with those issues? Probably. But uh, it's changing the planet so maybe try not to do that so much i mean common sense right anyway <clears throat> the idea here is you would take a non-noble metal 
and I would say magnesium because for, for an experiment, this is just for a test experiment. And I don't have the resources to do this right now, but maybe someone else does. So take some magnesium metal, which is highly reactive with carbon dioxide. Magnesium will actually burn in carbon dioxide. If you take a strip of magnesium metal, set it on fire and then spray CO2 gas on it, it'll burn even brighter and with a different color flame. So it reacts with CO2. So we know there's some affinity for it. If you could take magnesium wire or ribbon and coat it, completely coat it with a noble metal or some non-reactive uh, material that would prevent the oxygen from reacting with the magnesium. Perhaps you could electrify or heat this strip, this test strip, and expose it to carbon dioxide. And in such a situation, maybe, just maybe, the CO2 molecule would try to get to this magnesium, not be able to break off the carbon and send off the oxygen, right? Perhaps, perhaps. Um, it would be worth a test experiment. And maybe I have the, you know, I didn't look at the <clears throat> electrical states of each of the molecules, but it's just, an, just a hunch. So yeah, I wanted to leave that with you. Well, that's about it for now. Have a good one.